I mean, we got people leaving jobs now and refusing to work, and we got this labor shortage, which is insane. Why? Because government is, is supporting people to stay at home, and through this last pa pandemic, I knew people who were making more money by not working than they would have by going into their job. Now, how ridiculous and insane is that? But here's what I believe. You know, if you're in that situation, say, well, I'm going to make more money by staying home, but it's going to cause you to stay at home and not work. Men, go to work and make less money than staying home and being lazy. You say, but that doesn't make any sense. You know what? You need to be right with God because you don't want to be idle. And it's not just all about money. Okay, you go to work and work hard because that's what you're supposed to be doing. And not just being supported by mother government. Proverbs 20, verse number 4. Turn your view to Proverbs 26. I'm just going to read this real quickly. There's a lot of Proverbs here. Proverbs 20, verse 4, the Bible reads, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold, Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. See, the slugger's going, oh, it's cold outside. Oh, it's you know, there's always an excuse for the sluggard not to work. And, you know, think about that. Internalize that and say, you know, are you always coming up with excuses not to do things? If you do, maybe you're a sluggard. Now, look. I'm focusing on the men because it's men's job to work, but you know what, ladies? You can take this also and apply it to yourself because no one should be a sluggard. No one should be a sloth, male or female. Do you always have an excuse not to do work? It's cold. It's hot. It's too hot out. Now it's in the summer, right? It's hot outside. But you know what? Get to work. We've gotten so stinking comfortable with all of the air conditioning that we have, which is a very modern invention, by the way. Refrigeration, the heating, the cooling. Look, that's not always the way it is. Don't become a snowflake. Don't become so delicate. You can't work. I might break a nail. I might get a scrape or a scratch. I might, I might actually get a bead of sweat come down my face. Oh, no, please. That's a sluggard. It's a sluggard attitude. The sluggard's not going to plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Proverbs 26, look at verse number 12. The Bible reads, Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. And again, these excuses, we see the same thing. Oh, there's a, lion. there's a lion out there, I can't go outside. There's a virus out there, I can't go outside. I can't go to work. There's this invisible enemy, it might get me. So I'm just going to sit at home and do nothing and let the government pay me. And that's a wicked attitude that is going on today. It is pathetic. Verse 14, as the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. And again, this is, this is truth. This is wisdom. We talked about, you know, the, 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 the Bible teaches how slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, right? Like you, you get more and more lazy. But the lazy person, it says that they turn on their hinges. You know, when you spend a lot of time in bed, it actually becomes harder to sleep, but you're still going to be more tired. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon. You would think the lazy person, well, they should be all well-rested. But when you're not exerting energy, it's harder to get your body to sleep. I'll tell you, the hard worker, the person who works really hard, has no problem going to sleep at the end of the day. And this is my recommendation, you know, for people who think, you know, oh, I need to have sleep pills and all this other stuff to help me fall asleep. I've got a better solution for you than taking drugs, which those drugs, by the way, 
um, mess with your mind a lot, and, and they're not, I mean, not something you should be ingesting in your body. Let me just put it that way. I'm not going to go off in all the details about that. I don't have all the details fresh in my memory. It's been a long time since I've looked into that stuff. But I'll tell you what, it's wicked. It has an impact on your body that's more than just, oh, it just makes me a little sleepy. There's more to it than that. But my suggestion is work. Exert yourself. Because when you exert your body, then you will be able to sleep. And this is what I tell, you know, people, I, I just traveled to, you know, back from California, and, you know, it's a three-hour time difference, not that big of a deal. When people talk about jet lag and everything else, jet lag's real. Obviously, it could, it could impact you. Your body's used to a schedule or whatever. But I, I always say, you know what, I don't really have much of a problem with that ever. You know why? Because I don't sleep that much. Because <laughs> when you're already not really getting a lot of sleep, any time you get to go to sleep, it's like, great. If it's, if it's 9 p.m. here and it's midnight there, I don't care. It's easy to adjust when you're working hard and you're able just to go to sleep, whether it's 9 or midnight. You know, you stay up till the job gets done, whatever you need to get done, and you wake up when it's time to go to work. And you keep yourself busy. You could make those adjustments within a very short period of time. I'm already adjusted back to Eastern time. I adjusted myself to Pacific time, and I'm back on Eastern time. Done. You know how you, know how you do it? You just don't sleep that much for at least one night. Because <laughs> now when I go to bed, it's going to be like, great. I could go to bed much earlier because I need sleep. 